Nick Huffman is our guest on this episode of Cougar Conversations. He was the principal at Grayson County High School from 2003 to 2007. Coach Huffman, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, Mark. It's been a while. It has been a while. Um, you know, something I don't know about you that I'm curious about, where were you born and raised? I was born and raised in Louisville. Um, you know, went to Western, and then when I, after leaving Western, I came to Grayson County. When did you know you wanted to be an educator? Well, probably late in high school. I knew I wanted to coach. That's where I kind of started. And so I, I went from there and it kind of grew. So you came to Grayson County High School in 1976 as a physical education teacher at Grayson County Middle School. And I think our paths first crossed probably in fall of 1983, because I had PE at Grayson County Middle School at that time. You were probably teaching with uh, Pat McCann about that time? Pat McCann and Leon Davis. Sure <laughs> yeah, I forgot about Notice the... They were great years for me. Were you the specialist at the square dancing? Is that the, an area that you excelled at? Or? <laughs> well, you know what? Pat and Leon could both teach that, but yeah, I was, I was pretty good at it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel joke about that today. So then I think you, I also had you in PE probably when I got to the high school and you were at the high school, but uh, you were one of the early directors of the AEC, I think. Is that back in the days we still called it the Big A? Was that the alternative school? Were you, you led that for a while, right? Yes, I did. And, and what I did was the, uh, it was the alternative school that was out behind the old First Baptist Church, that little block building out there. So I was out yes. there for two or three years. Sure was. So then you were in administration at uh, GC, uh, GCMS. You went to Caneyville for a while as principal. Then you ended up uh, at Grayson County High School from 2003 to 2007. Then you were at the central office, uh, Title I director, then back to Grayson County High School as a assistant principal for a while. You've bounced around quite a bit in the in the district. You know, I think I had as much experience in that district as anyone. I, I was at every level in every building. Uh, actually, after central office, I actually retired. And then I went back to help at that time. Uh, well, I did that for a couple of years. Bill Emery and I kind of split that up. So yeah, I was there for a while, but at that time I was already retired. Of all those roles that I mentioned, from the middle school in PE to uh, EC and all the ones we've mentioned, did you have a, looking back, do you have a favorite or one that you enjoyed the most? You know, Mark, that's, that's a pretty tough question. I, I enjoyed all of them. It's hard for me to put one over the other. Um, when I taught PE at the high school, you know, I was surrounded by some fun people there. If you remember, Bill and I taught there, and all the high school kids, and we were coaching that time. And, so that was a great time for me, but the uh, and my days at Caneyville were absolutely special to me because that's a special group of people there that, that I worked with. Uh, then I went to the high school and ran into the same thing. You know, a lot of great people. Uh, it's pretty challenging work, long days and lots of excitement. So when were you introduced to Linda? Oh, Linda and I met um, in Bowling Green, and when we were in school. I actually had a class. We have to sit, in each other, sit next to each other in a class. And to this day, we still joke about that, <coughs> that class, because I believe I got a better grade in that class than she did. <laughs> so I hold that over her head. I We've been together. For I, 40, I think 40, so. We've been together 49 years now, Mark. Wow. Congratulations on that. That's wonderful to hear. When I look back at your years at Grayson County High School as principal, you were in, I guess, the early of the second half. And as you know, we've been featuring on the 50 years of Grayson County High School. You were kind of, uh, as we you know turned the corner into the second half of that 50 years, what is there anything you can look back during that time early in the, in the millennium that you, we can be particularly proud of during those early 2000s? Yeah, I think so. You know, at that time, we were starting to get into testing real big. And so things were being revamped. And uh, that was the challenge in the schools. We had to change what we were doing. We had to change instructional styles. Um, so it was new to everybody. And at times it was very challenging. And other times it was fun. You know, uh, 
but I think we did a good job with that. We turned the corner. We're on the right path. Of course, I've lost track of it since. Uh, but I was smart enough to know that I had to bring in some good people to help me. And, and uh, I was very fortunate. You know, uh, Mr. Robinson, I, I call him Doug, of course. Uh, he was. I worked toward getting Mr. Robinson there. And I had a lady named Miss St. Clair. And they were my assistant principal. Uh, and I think we... I think we turned it around there in terms of uh, instructional techniques and strategy. So yeah, we had a great year. Um, the other thing that I should say is I was very, very fortunate and that the whole time I was at the high school, I worked under two superintendents. Of course, you know both Teddy White and Barry Anderson. And those guys, they gave me everything I wanted and needed. You know, if I go and say, look, we really need this, there weren't many questions asked, we just did it. So yeah, that was a great, great time for us. You touched on a few minutes ago a period while you were at Grayson County High School as a PE teacher that you and Coach Embry and Coach Houchin were all part of the uh, you know, part of the, the coaching staff for the football team, and uh, you uh, were at that for quite some time. And you were you you were cursed in a way of having to deal with me for a short period of time. Uh, <laughs> I should apologize to you. I was a terrible football player. But um, I enjoyed my, my time being with you. I just got a late start, so I was not an asset at all. I was just kind of occupying a uniform. But I appreciate your time and energy uh, while you were my coach. Well, you know, you say that. And that's not true. You know, you're a good football player. You were a little bit behind the other guys. But, no, that we had some great years. Uh, that was a really great time in my life for watching young men grow. You know, well, you knew how Bill and I were, Mike. We worked at the coaching part of it, but we felt like we were trying to do the right thing by the kids. And so um, I watch your news, the, the news on K105. That's how I keep up with what's going on back in Litchfield. So I see what's going on down at the square. You know, I see they're, they're redeveloping about all that. I see what you're doing there in your situation. Uh, you know, with all those guys that play, they're all doctors now. They're leaders of the community. You know, there's Norman Chapins. Uh, to sit back and see what you all have done with that community. I mean, that's, to me, that's really neat. Uh, so, yeah, I've enjoyed working with all you guys and watching what you've done as a dog. Well, you're very, you're very kind. I will tell you my, my short time with the football program, um, it was something that I wanted to do primarily because we needed more players during that time. You know, we were kind of struggling after the Marty Haycraft era, as I call it. We needed more bodies. And uh, my friend Cole Allen was the, was the center on your uh, offensive line. And Cole encouraged me and I wanted to be included. But, you know, when I grew up in Caneyville, we didn't have a junior pro football program. I had a, a doctor as a grandfather and a nurse as an aunt who said no football. And so I got started. I got started late. But finally, I just sort of snuck out there and decided I was going to be uh, on the team. But I will tell you, it was very it was character building. It was harder than anything I had done to that point. You know, football camp at Camp Lucon is not something that. Uh, you can think you're prepared for it, but you're not. But it's you learn lessons from that that you still carry forward. Um, those were, as you mentioned, some fun times. Yes, they were fun times. Camp Luke on uh, Bill and I still we we talk probably twice a month. And uh, if I ever get up there, he gets down here. We talk about Camp Luke on it's those are good stories for us. I, I should also tell you, I was a bit envious um, as I was clearly a non-skilled player. Uh, your specialty were the skilled players. You know, you had the you had the backs and you had the, uh, you know, I think maybe Coach Houchin had some of the receivers and so, but you were working in the backfield with the running backs and the quarterbacks. And I must tell you, you reminded me a lot of my dad in the way that you were articulate, you were uh, well-spoken, you were clearly educated, uh, you were kind of a yuppie, you sort of dressed like a yuppie at that time. And so I really admired the way that you carried yourself and the way that you that you led us as young people. And so it made an impact and I wanna thank you. Well, I, I appreciate that because, you know, I think the world of your dad, so any comparison to him, I'll, I'll take that. While we're talking about family, tell me a little bit about uh, Miles and, and Graham, and I'm sure they've gone on to do wonderful things. They're, both boys are doing fine. Uh, Graham is currently living in Louisville. Miles has moved away quite some time ago, so he's still you know, in New York City. Um, we don't see them as often as we like to. We like to get up and back. And for, we have a, plan, a trip planned on uh, Thanksgiving. But yeah, they're both doing fine. That's, that's turned out pretty good for us. I think I read where Miles maybe got his uh, MBA from from Wharton. That's a real easy school to go through, I'm sure. 
<laughs> yeah, he did do that. <clears throat> we're we're proud of Miles. He's he's done really well. He's uh, just now finished up. They built a house in the Catskills. He's living in the city, but they built a house in the, house in the Catskills, so he's consumed with that right now. But uh, yeah, that that work in school. That was some good stories. Sometimes if I ever get to Litchfield, we'll sit and tell you some stories that he told me about some of his classmates. It was an amazing time. Yeah, I would love love to hear that. Your retirement is happening in in Florida, as I understand it. And I read that uh, you kind of alternate between uh, the fishing rod and maybe a little pickleball. But what else do you and Linda stay busy doing? Well, our our day pretty much consists in the morning. Most mornings I'll try to fish. Uh, when the pompano are not running, then I don't fish as much. But we'll play pickleball three to five days a week. Uh, then after that, we go out to lunch and meet with friends. We've got a million friends through pickleball, and then we. We live in a development here, so we have friends here. But we'll spend the day out in lunch, and then maybe in the evening, hook back up with friends and go down the beach and watch the sunset, tell stories. Uh, but there's, you know, when you retire, there's a lot of, you do a lot of eating out and uh, fun times with friends, and that's that's what we do. So uh, we're doing a special extended version of our Cougar Conversations that are appearing on YouTube, and the people who are still with us now are probably getting the extended version outside of our football coverage. I want to ask you something about school administration before I let you go. What do you see in current school administration or in current education that you like that you say, I really wish we had that when I was in education as a professional? Anything you see? Well, they have access to so many more things, you know, professionals in the building. Um, those those things are all good. Um, I'm a little concerned. It seems to me like the principals are losing more and more control of what they need to do. And when you scatter that am out amongst too many people, oftentimes you don't get much done. Um, but the access that they have now with professionals in the building and all that, uh, well, in some of the larger districts, of course, they have people with counselors now that are psychologists. Um, the health care part of it is, is unbelievable. Um, so you, schools, are, schools are definitely better than they were when, when we were around, but uh, there's some things about them that concern me. Yeah, and that was sort of going to be my next question. What do you see that that you're glad you don't have to deal with? And that prob that answer could probably go on a while. But, you know, um, you've probably heard me say, or perhaps you've heard me say that I identify that too long ago, too many people decided that it was the school system's job to raise their kids. And so they just sent them and they're asking too much. And really, it, it's a, it has to be a balanced relationship between home and school and all of the stakeholders. It seemed like maybe we've gotten out of balance a little bit on that. I think you're right, Mark. I think it has to do with the community. I, you know, I think most of the people in Grayson County still trust the school officials. And so they give you a little leeway to work. I, I think in the larger cities, you know, that trust isn't there. And perhaps rightfully so. I, I don't know. But um, I think Grayson County is a different setting. You know, again, I could go into, into Grayson County now and run into a lot of people I know and I think they would still trust me. Uh, I just don't think that's the case anymore in, in a lot of, uh, well, in, certainly in public education. Sure. Uh, on a brighter note, how often do you d get to come back to Grayson County? Well, you know, I might get there twice a year. Most of the time it's once a year. Linda goes up. I, you may know we still keep a place up in Louisville. You, you knew we had a place up there, I believe. Yes. So she goes up. She has a bunch of girlfriends up there. It's, a, it's another high rise. And so she goes up there probably five times a year. But I go up maybe once or twice. And, and anytime I come up, I always go down and spend a day or two with Bill. Uh, he's, he's last time I went, he kind of met me or, or introduced me to a bunch of guys I already knew, but I think they call it, they have a board meeting on Fridays at one of the new restaurants in town there. So, you know, I got to visit with some of those guys, but yeah, when I come up, I'll, I'll go to Bill's and I'll knock and run by and see Doug. Uh, I'll text the North Norman and Doug come down here. When they come down here, they stop by and see me. So we go out for lunch and dinner. Uh, but yeah, I'll try to keep up with them. We wouldn't have gotten 50 years as a uh, great institution without some strong leaders, and you certainly were one. We thank you for all of your blood, sweat, and tears that you've put into the entire district over the years, and especially at Grayson County High School. Coach Huffman, thanks for your time, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate it.